Digital Will. Watch it, subscribe, and keep watching. Ask your questions. Thank you. Yeah. So this is Yvette Chevalier, and I'm a candidate for Clark County Family Court Judge, Department I. Hello viewers, it's another um, good, good afternoon in the city of Las Vegas and um, we are here for our show, My Manifesto. As we promised you that we're going to be bringing in some of the candidates to let the community know more of what's actually going on in the city of Las Vegas and how they can impact into the society positively and uh, we are actually here to uh, showcase some of um, the candidates for the forthcoming elections in the city of Las Vegas. As you keep watching, keep subscribing, ask your questions in the comment box and uh, like our videos. Thank you and God bless. Yeah. Yeah. Currently we're going to be introducing some of uh, the persons that are actually taking part in on today's program. Uh, we have a presenter, a moderator, and uh, uh, one of uh, the candidates running for the forthcoming election, and also community members, businessmen, that will also uh, let you know things that are currently existing in the city of Las Vegas for you to also patronize and uh, uh, see the welfare of our community. Right now, I'm going to be introducing to you uh, the moderator for today, which is uh, Tamika, and uh, she also going to be uh, asking some vital questions and uh, relating to the public on what we going to expect from today's show. Yeah, over to you. Um, hello, you all. We are coming from um, showcasing from Digital Will. And so continue, like, I, like he said, to like and share. If you have any questions, you all, just make sure that you can ask them like down in the um, comment section. And um, we will make sure that we answer those questions to our candidates for um, the judge that's coming up for our upcoming election secure in this world they have to trust their family they have to know that they have people that are theirs always so i'm not there to pit one parent against the other or say oh i proved it you know no i just want to hear from your child because i can tell a lot by the way they draw a picture what they say what they do how they look how they smile what they're you know how they whether they're nervous whether they look at you in your eye when they're talking right. whether they put their head down whether they fidget I can tell a lot about what's going on in their life just by body language because I'm trained to do that. I have forensic training, I have a master's in counseling psychology, I have experience, I have a doctorate all but dissertation in educational leadership. So I understand human dynamics and how people move around and behave and I think that will make a difference. I will give your child a chance to help me understand what is really best for that child when it's appropriate. I probably can't do 100%, but when there's a, a need for it, I'm gonna take the time to do that. Um, you know, um, I've lived here since 1981, and I was born in Puerto Rico. My grandma had a second grade education. My mom had an eighth grade education. I'm the first college graduate in my family. I'm, you know, from Puerto Rico, raised in the Bronx, and so I've been around, and I have been up and I've been way down so I understand poverty and I understand struggles and I understand all the things that people bring to the court but I don't have to judge them harshly about that because I understand how it works in communities and I would not use that against a parent unless it endangers the child obviously you know I'm not judging you on what you do or how you look or anything like that I'm there to find out how 
can I help you and the other person co-parent so your child feels loved by both people? And then how can I help your child be placed in the most safe environment? That's my goal. That's my job. And then how can I be fair to both you and the other person in dividing up your property or whatever if you can't do it for yourselves? That, that's my goal. You know, recently, you don't know, but I'll tell you, I, I purchased about $8,000 in signs for my campaign. And I would say that at least of the 300 that I purchased, uh, probably 250 were removed. Um, I represented, yeah, I represented eight African American families in a, in a lawsuit against the labor union uh, a couple of years ago. I helped them after their lawsuit had been almost dead. I helped them revive it because it was just to do so and they needed a lawyer to help them. I, never, I wasn't planning to run for family court and make enemies with all the unions in Las Vegas, but because I did that and I helped these people who lost their businesses try to recapture their businesses or their money back or what have you, you know, the unions have retaliated against me. But I will tell you that I was a member of the teachers union and the SEIU union myself. I have about 17 years of union experience and I support labor and I support prevailing wage and people making good money for their children and families and having good benefits. I am pro worker. Whether it's union or not union, I'm pro people being able to earn a living. So I'm not saying that the union took them down, but I can't imagine who else could take down 300 signs in a city this big so quickly and rip them off, not even leave them on the ground. Like, take them and steal my signs and throw them away or hide them somewhere and laugh about it. I would never want to win an election by stealing my opponent's signs. If I knew that my supporters, my endorsers, my union endorsements were doing something like that, I would ask them to stop. I would say, listen, I don't want that karma. I don't want to win a family court judge seat by ripping off my opponent's signs because that's bad news. I don't know if my opponent knows it, but I've made it known that my signs have been disappearing and they continue to disappear, so I'm not buying signs anymore. But that was like $7,000 in wasted money because they actually, I had gigantic signs and they all disappeared, which is really a horrible thing to do to somebody. You know, I'm a mother, a single woman, and a grandma, and somebody stealing my signs to hurt my possibilities of getting votes when people drive by and see my name is really, really, really dirty politics and um, what have you. That, that's just one example of how dirty politics works in Clark County still after all these years. And I'm sure it works that way in other places, but that's really criminal behavior. That's not even, oh, I don't like you, I'm going to support somebody else and vote for them. That's cool. Vote for who you want to. But if you rip off my signs and you steal my signs, that, that really crosses into uh, vandalism and, and, and property theft, and you don't have a right to do that, whoever you are out there doing it. So I just want to say that because that has happened, God has really blessed me, okay? Blessed me with people like these that want to help me and support me, with all of you guys here that are giving me a chance to appear in a video and, and reach out to the community. Um, I was blessed with somebody who practically donated to me eight gigantic billboard signs around the city with my name on them. I have a truck with a 27 foot truck with my, you know, with seven foot tall with my banners on them that I'm getting to use with no cost except for the gas expenses. So even though people do bad things, we can do good. We can still smile and find blessings and we don't have to fight and get nasty. We can win by just believing in yourself and by finding alternatives. That's what I'm doing for my election and that's what I will help you do in family court as your family court judge. Yvette Chevalier Lopez, candidate for Clark County Family Court Judge, Department I. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question. There's great ideas for us to do um, with our um, with our children while they are have been on this um, quarantine and also upcoming summer break. There are plenty of things to do. I know people are going to be a little anxious about doing that. So thank you for um, giving us such great ideas as a community as what to do. We have one more question or comment. Would you like to um, share any expressions? Oh yes, I would. I, my my question is again. I just want to know how we can how we can help, how we can truly serve and help the communities because you're already doing, you're a mom and you, and, uh, and so you understand, you're, you're right in there. And, and my partner here is a, a grandmom too, you guys are both grandmoms and moms. So I just want to know how what we can do to, to, to help and support you. 
Uh, thanks for that question. So I think that right now with the COVID-19 uh, scenario that we have in our community, that's something that all small businesses and large businesses can do is encourage parents by holding outdoor activities that are safe. Children have a lot of adrenaline going on in their bodies. Yeah. They need vitamin D, they need exercise, they need to run off some of that steam. They do not need to be sitting in front of a computer with uh, electronic emissions in their brains and faces 24 seven. I mean, computers have their place, but we also need kids to temper that exposure to these waves, electric waves, with regular sunshine and fresh air and companionship and to interact with other children because isolating kids can be extremely damaging, not only to their psyche, but even their immune system is becoming weak by not going outdoors. I don't know that all people know how to play with their children and that they know how to get them out of the house and give them something safe but constructive to do outdoors, like working with chalk on the sidewalk, or even if we could work with the, if you could work with your local fire departments in Henderson and see if they'll have an afternoon, not all day, but an afternoon on a Saturday or Sunday where they allow the fire hydrants to run for a couple of hours and you can have kids in family groups, maybe not uh, so to avoid the, the COVID exposure, you could have a family group of kids sit out there and splash around and play with their little, you know, foam things hitting each other for 15 minutes. Give each family 15 minutes to cool off. And those kids will go home feeling so refreshed and feeling cool and happy, that water splashing on them, laughing and playing around. I think that's a very simple strategy that works great in this hot desert and that families would be grateful for and that the community can all come together even if at a distance. That's what I recommend. And of course, share my name with your, with your contact because I need all the votes I can get, Yvette Chevalier Lopez, for Family Court Judge. Thank you. You got my vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you got my vote. So what we want to know from you is when is the voting um, that we can do in the community? When when are we able to go and vote for you? And what means are we able to vote for you? Like, you know, like through whatever kind of means are available. Are you going to have um, another forum where you are community forum where you are speaking to the public in the community? So please let us know the dates and what any locations that are particular that you may be um, at to be able to ask, answer any questions that are in the community. Um, anything Great. that you would like to share? Sure. So by now, if you're a pre-registered voter, if you've already registered to vote, you should have a ballot book that came through U.S. mail. And there's an envelope postage prepaid. It's a long sheet. And I'm there on Department I, Yvette Chevalier Lopez. You fill it in with a little blue or black pen and pick all your other candidates and put that in the U.S. mail and return it. That's the easiest way. But you can also go to different locations around the city. There's a list in there of a lot of community centers where they have drop boxes. So you can, if you don't feel safe putting it in the mailbox somewhere, go drop it off at one of those community centers. Now, if you've not registered to vote or you moved a lot and your ballot is floating around somewhere, uh, you can go and vote at the actual election sites on June 9th. I guess they're gonna have like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or thereabouts. And there's three of them now. The Clark County Election Department at 500 Grand Central Parkway is one of them. There's one on Cheyenne and Trade, Trade Street, State Street, Cheyenne and State Street. Uh, there's an election department there. They're going to be doing voting there. And um, Wow, I can't remember the third one, but they're listed on the Clark County website. Um, I actually don't remember exactly where the third location is because it just added them like yesterday or the day before. Um, so you, there are three locations around the city that you can go vote in person. You bring one of your uh, maybe electric bill or power bills or phone bill to provide proof. You don't even need a driver's license. That's not true anymore. It used to be that you needed one, but you can bring in some other form of ID, bring your birth certificate and a, a bill or, some, or two bills with your name on it and some sort of ID if you have something, a veteran's ID, a state ID or some sort of a medical card with your name on it. So you don't need a driver's license anymore to re you know, register to vote. 
Um, you can register same day, that very same day you can go in if you've not registered to vote. You can walk, stay, you're going to have to stand in line 10 feet apart and God knows how long it'll take. But um, you can go that same day and, and vote and register to vote. They, they will hold your ballot to make sure you are who you say you are so they don't have a bunch of people just voting and registering the same day. But as long as you're, you clear as being the person you said you were and you're eligible to vote, meaning you are a U.S. citizen and you can vote, um, then, then your vote will be counted. And something very interesting is that now, if you've ever had a felony or gross misdemeanor or misdemeanor, you can vote. You don't need to petition the state or the pardon board or anybody else for your right to vote. Once you've done your time and you've left prison, you can vote. That automatically restores your you know, your eligibility to vote. So don't be afraid because you've got some past criminal record that you can't vote, you can vote. And so that there's a lot of voting options for people that have never voted. And anyone who's turning 18 between now and June 9th, if you haven't registered to vote, you're 17 and you have a birthday coming up, go vote on June 9th. It's a great feeling to vote for the first time when you turn 18 years old. And as far as other events, I do have a weekly, I have two weekly programs, one on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on Zoom. And if you go to Elect Event Chevalier Lopez 2020 on Facebook, you'll see on my website, www.electeventchevalierlopez.com, it says chat with Yvette. Every Wednesday, I am taking questions from people, and I've been helping people with their legal dilemmas, because things are really weird right now. You can't go to court. They're not having court sessions. A lot of people don't know how to get help right now because right. you're in your home and you're like, what happens to my, what do I do if I pay child support but I'm out of work? Do I just let it go? No, you follow, stay so that your credit doesn't get ruined and so that you don't owe, owe back child support and look delinquent and it affects your, you know, your job and your career and everything in the future. Don't just let it go. Go let the judge know, hey, I need it temporarily reduced to the minimum because my unemployment's only this much and my bills are that much. I will get back to my regular amount once I'm working. And don't let that ride and ruin your credit or your, you know, your uh, license and maybe even put you in jail sometime right. in the future. So you need to do that, and it's easy. Go to the Legal Aid Center of Southern Nevada and click on their links. Say, you know, motion to stay child support, temporary stay for child support. File it with the court. You fill it out, mail it in, or you know, if you can scan it in and do it electronically, that's better. But if not, put it in the U.S. mail. Save yourself the trouble of owing a lot of interest and delinquent charges on right. your old child support, you know, amounts. Yes. Um, yeah. So that that's what I suggest. Um, I do have a Thursday meeting as well on a Spanish radio station called. Um, it's called radiopositivo.com, so I'm doing that as well. And last week we did rights for fathers. It was really interesting. So I'm available. I actually answered my own phone, 702-544-0085. If you call me and I can help you or steer you, I can't do all the legal cases for free, but if I could steer you, I will, 702-544-0085. And thank you for your vote and your support. I appreciate you, and I hope you can appreciate me, Yvette Chevalier. He wants to ask a question. So, uh, I heard that you said that Tony Brooks uh, union members took down your signs. I would want to know why, why, did, why do you think that Tommy Brooks, Tommy White, had, had something to do with taking down the signs for your candidate? I'm pretty sure that he, he's a very nice guy and I'm pretty sure that if he knew you and knew that you was a fighter for the small man like he is, that you guys could probably work together and, and get this thing straightened out. How would you address him about that? Sure, well thank you for that question. So I'm not sure who took down my signs. I only mentioned the labor's union because my opponent got a large support from the labor's union and I don't know Tommy White personally. I would love to know Tommy White and work with him because I myself was a member of the teachers union for 17 years, a member of the SEIU union. My uncle was a uh, a, a garment industry union uh, leader, manager in New York City for 35 years. My cousin Bobby Bonilla was a professional baseball player and he was the union steward for the, for the Mets players. Okay, so I'm 
always have been involved in different type of unions and I support people working and having a decent prevailing wage for their children and families. So I have nothing against Tommy White. I don't even know Tommy White. I only know that I represented a, a, a group of contractors that had a dispute with Tommy White and because of that it seemed to me like the union has you know picked on me as somebody they want to hurt rather than help. But I'm actually a friend of the little man and a friend of the working class people. So so I hope that Tommy White gives me a call and helps me and gives me gives me a chance to talk with him about why I represented those uh, contractors as a lawyer, not as a person. 702-544-0085. I'm open to having a conversation. And thank you for bringing my, that to my attention. Yes, uh, I'm pretty sure he should, he, Tommy White, he, he has a very down earth mind. I'm pretty sure that he will. He will be glad to talk to you about that, hopefully, and uh, maybe straighten that out, and and we we can support you, and uh, we definitely gonna support Tommy. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe, thank you. Maybe we can all come together. That that would be awesome. I really would like my signs back if I yes. know where they are, yes. and even if they didn't take them, if he could support me and yes. at least give me a chance to explain yes. how I would help the children and families that that are members of his union, yes. I would definitely appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I want to support Tommy.